friend oh. So you're wanting to up your detail game on your furniture projects, but that standard 45 degree chamfer is simply... Meh. You're wanting something trendier, cooler, slicker, so you need this. This is a 13.1 degree angled chamfer jig, yet it's a simple design that saves you from making sketchy, dangerous cuts of the table saw, but will leave you with a great finish that will skyrocket your design options on your projects. Right off the bat, I'm not saying it's the first jig of its kind, but I was inspired by Chris and Sean from Four Eyes Furniture, and I've seen Mark from Deer River Craftsman make one mm. since I built this one yonks ago. I'll link both their channels below, but a video on how to make one that that I couldn't find, so let's build a new one together. The best place to start is the base that the router will slide on. Now, each router will obviously be different in size and shape, so cater this for your own specific tool brand that you have. I'm going to first cut out some strips on the table saw and some scrap 15mm aka half inch plywood. Two of the strips are wider for the router base plate to ride along, and the remaining four, which I've cut slimmer, will be for guides, a rest stop for the router, and then a top section so it doesn't wobble about. The base of this trim router is roughly 88 millimeters, roughly three and a half inches. So once you've measured yours, you can simply cut them to length and connect them all together however you want. Screws and glue, or just glue and brad nails like I am here. As you can see here, I've left a gap here in the middle for the router bit to slip into. <laughs> Overall, mine is 21.5 centimeters long, roughly eight and a half inches. Just check your router glides nicely and doesn't get caught. Best to make any changes now before we continue on to the next step. Just like I had to, because it was a bit tight up here, hence why I had to remove some pieces and hence the damaged plywood. So once you're happy with the base, measure the width of it and cut a scrap piece of plywood to match and this will become the base for your base. I've used thinner six millimeter material here so the router can be closer to the surface of what you'll be using the jig on. Then simply cut out two wedges at your desired angle. Attach the wedges to the underside of the base, then slip your base base on and attach that. Again, this could all be done with either screws or brads, CA glue or bog standard wood glue. I then attach some blocks to the underside of the base base to avoid it slipping about when in use. This works well if you're using the jig on a straight edge and on curved pieces. For that, I just angle them slightly to accommodate that sexy curve. You can also add a pin so the jig can pivot around on circular pieces, which I ended up doing here. Now before we see the G in action, you're probably thinking, surely there's a router bit out there that could do just that. And you'd be right, but you'd have to sell your soul to get one. But if you find a reasonably priced top quality bit, let me and everyone else know in the comments section below. But in the meantime, a little patience to make the jig and a little extra for cutting it out is so worth it. Such a stereotypical woodworker. I'll make it myself. And this is how it works. Wait, let me just make a quick circle. Simply install a flat bit in the router, go over your piece once, and yes, you'll cut through a section of your base base, and then keep lowering the bit until you've reached your desired sexy looking chamfer detail. I used my original jig for this particular piece as I'll be setting up the new one we just made for a potential upcoming project before you beady eyes start commenting below. It's a really easy jig to make, and in my opinion, everyone should add it to their inventory of options. If you want to see the jig in action on an actual furniture build, click on this video here. But I hope you enjoyed the jig, folks. I'll see you later. Slap that wood and call me monkey. Bye.